Awesome. We are so glad that you've joined us here tonight on First Wednesday, and uh, we're excited about everything that God is going to do here tonight. So before you're seated, greet two or three people, give them a fist bump, tell them happy Wednesday. God bless you. If you don't know their name, introduce yourself to them. Make somebody welcome to church tonight. How many of you have ever heard Reggie Dabbs in person yourself? All right, that's like less than 10. I've got some really, really, really good news for you. Well, here's some bad news. Bad news is you've been missing out. Here's the good news. After tonight, you won't have missed out anymore. Reggie has been traveling the world for more than 30 years. He's spoken to over 1 million high school students. He has an incredible story, and uh, he's going to share a little bit of that here tonight. I, I just want, you know, I just want to remind you, sometimes we take for granted the blessing. You are hashtag blessed tonight to be at First Wednesday, because this is a guy who travels everywhere, and uh, think of somebody famous, you know, in ministry and Christendom and serving. He's probably mentored them and trained them and helped them. It's that kind of opportunity you have here tonight. I want to give a, just a quick thing to invite every high school junior and senior uh, and college students, young adults, after service is over, after we're done praying and altar time's over, you're going to go to the commons in the back of the building. On the, actually, it's the other front of the building. And uh, free pizza, all kinds of stuff sponsored by the Indie School of Leadership. So free stuff. Encourage all of you students and uh, high school students, college students, young adults to be part of that. I do want to let you know that uh, we're going to receive an offering for our guest when the service is over. So, or actually before the service is over, we're going to receive an offering for our guest tonight. But would you put your hands together and give a great grace welcome to Reggie Dabbs. Well, how's everybody doing? Indiana. I'm going to be honest, y'all, y'all ain't ready for me. But I ain't got nowhere else to go, so we might as well just hang out together. My name Reggie. I'm from South Florida. Y'all don't get it. You do know I'm from the South South. And I'm black. And I'm a preacher. If you've seen a Medea movie, it's about to go off up in this room tonight, all right? Now look, now look, now look. Automatically, some of y'all looking at me like, what? <laughs> there's rules, there's rules, okay? When there's a southern black preacher, there's rules. Rule number one, you got to talk to your neighbor. So touch your neighbor, look them in the eye and say, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Turn to the person on the other side of you, do it again, say, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> number two. You got to talk to the preacher. Somebody say, come on, Reggie. Oh, I like it here. Y'all just a bunch of white chocolate people up in here, aren't you? Number three, it's simple. You're going to have a good time. The more I talk, the more you're going to love me and Jesus, all right? It's going to be good. It's going to be good. If you got a Bible, you need to turn to John chapter 16, verse number 33. John 16, 33. Before we go there, we got to set the tone a little bit, all right? Hey, let me explain. If I'm from the South and I'm a Southern preacher, I got to give you a little taste of what it would sound like if you were in South Florida with me. So I'm not just a speaker. I'm also a saxophone player. And that, that is a soprano saxophone. Is it all right? Can I play a little tune for everybody? Am I all right? This is what it would sound like back home. Here we go. It's going to be good.
somebody say, all right, all right, all right. I told you, y'all ain't ready. Look at all the young people. What up, young people? I should probably do something for the young people. Okay, look. I'm going to do something for the young people, and I'm going to come right off that and do something for the old people. Let's see which one sings louder. I'm going to start with the young people. Now, young people, this one's for you. I play the verse. You sing the chorus. There's one young man I'm doing this for in this room. If I get in trouble, it's your fault, little boy. <laughs> after that, if you old, the song after this one's for you. If you got an AARP card in your wallet or in your purse, <laughs> the song after this is for you. And if you old and you proud, when this, not this song, when the next song comes on, I want you to get your phone, turn on the flashlight, and just wave it over your head. <laughs> but if you old, you didn't even know your phone had a flashlight. So give your phone to a teenager and they'll turn it on for you, all right? Song number one, for the young people. I play the verse, you sing the chord. Y'all going to like it. Here we go. Young people, don't, don't let me down. Clap your hands. Come on, young people, look at your neighbor and sing when you smile. Tell them. Clap for the young people. All right, old people, turn on those lights.
somebody say, all right, all right, all right. I already said it once. I'm going to say it one more. Y'all ain't ready. In John chapter 16, verse 33, the Bible says this. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Oh, go ahead. Talk back to me, all right? See, some of y'all need to realize I don't know what you're going through tonight. I don't know what you had to see this morning. I don't know what made you not want to come to church tonight. But now that you're here, my favorite word in the dictionary can be yours. Hope. Hope comes in rooms like this. Hope changes lives in rooms like this. Because another word for hope is Jesus. If you know what I'm talking about, say amen. My title tonight, and all brothers, we title our sermons. This is what we do. And we all have hankies. If you ever see a black preacher and he don't sweat, he ain't black. All right? <laughs> I'm just saying. I ain't going to lie to y'all. I'm just saying. So my title, you got to say it to your neighbor. Here's my title. Look at somebody beside you and say, everything's going to be all right. Look at the person on the other side of you one more time and say, everything's going to be all right. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Now to help you on a Wednesday night start understanding where I'm coming from, I need to take you on a journey. Now let me help you out. Everything I'm about to say is true. Hit your neighbor and say, he ain't lying. Hit your other neighbor and say, he telling the truth. Look at that girl in the direct TV t-shirt and say, he telling the truth. That's what I saw. I just, I just, I see it as I see it. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Her name is Tara. Everybody say Tara. She's in the eighth grade. Tara played the clarinet in the band. She was on the volleyball team and she was in student government. She loved school. But what she loved more than anything was December 26th to January 1st. One week. She loved it. You know why? Because on December 26th, her, her mom, and dad, the three of them would get on a plane in Dallas, Texas, and fly to Denver, Colorado, get a rental car, and drive up in the mountains. And for seven days, she'd go skiing. She loved skiing. Her daddy loved skiing with his little girl. Now, mama, not so much. Mama looked like a skier. (laughs) Mama dressed like a skier, but mama never left the lodge, all right? She just never left the lodge. One year, they got up early. They got to the ski hill. It was like 1030 in the morning. So dad grabbed his skis. Little girl grabbed hers. Mama grabbed her book. And they went up the hill, came all the way down. A second time came down. I don't know if you've ever been over there in the winter. It gets dark fast up in the mountains. So dad said, we can only go halfway. So they went halfway up and started coming down. Dad was in front of his daughter. But he heard her voice. He just heard, ha! Ah! When he looked back, his daughter was laying by a tree. Her skis got crossed. Other skiers saw it. She bumped her head. But she had a helmet on. But yet and still, she was unconscious. They called the paramedics. They came with a sled. They put her in an ambulance and they took her to the hospital. If we fast forward three hours... In the emergency room, through the double doors that say, do not enter, a doctor came out, walked over to Tara's mom and dad and said these words, I'm sorry. There's nothing we can do. In one hour, we will turn the machine off and your baby will be gone. I'm sorry for your loss. If you don't understand that, then maybe you'll understand this. Her name is Heather. Everybody say Heather. Now, Heather, she had five brothers and two sisters. Heather, she loved her daddy. Her daddy, he had like, he worked for seven different hospitals. He was a neurosurgeon. She barely saw him, but she loved her daddy. He would work for seven months solid. Then he would take four weeks off when they were out of school and go on the best vacations any kid ever gone on in their life. Then he would take a month and pack his bags and go to the continent of Africa. Now, I love this. So hit your neighbor, make sure they're awake and say, you got to hear this. Hit your other neighbor and say, you gots to hear this. 
Okay, look, look, look. He would go to Africa and do surgery on people that the doctors in Africa would not do surgery on because they were highly infected with HIV AIDS. But the way he did it was cool. He would meet with the family, any family member, before the surgery, explain what he was going to do. Then he would say, you're wondering, why would an American come to Africa and do a surgery that some African doctors could do? It's because they won't do it, and I will, and I'll tell you why after I save your relative's life. This is like one of the best things I've ever heard in my life. He would save these kids, or an adult. He would save a mom, a dad, a grandpa, an uncle. Then everybody would be in the conference room after it was over. And his first words were, your family member is going to be fine. They would hug him and everything. Then he would say, the only reason I came is for this opportunity. You see, I believe in Jesus. He helped me have the education to save your relative. So I could tell you, this is the second time your relative was saved. The first time was when Jesus became a man and died on the cross for the sins of the world. And he died for you too. He would lead hundreds and hundreds. Muslim, Buddha, it don't matter what religion. Once you save somebody's life, they're going to listen to what you got to say. See, sometimes we got to be the feet of Jesus before we get to be the voice of him. I better just go on with my sermon because I'm just a visitor. I don't want to start meddling, all right? So, hit it, hit it. So, dude, she decided, you know what Heather wanted? She wanted to be just like her daddy. She wanted to be just like, she went to school, made straight A's. She went to grad school, went to college. She did it all, straight A's. Went to surgical school, straight A's. Till the day she got to pack her bags and go to Africa and be Jesus to other people too. One day she was in surgery room one. Her dad was in surgery room two. His surgery was a lot more extensive than hers. When she got done and led a family to Jesus, she went to the restaurant to get food for her dad. She came back. She knew she had about an hour before he would come out. But he came out early. He didn't even recognize or see her. He was focusing on his right hand. He put it under the water. He started pulling off the surgical glove. And the blood came pouring out of his hand. He made a tragic mistake. He cut himself. I don't know if y'all know about HIV and AIDS. It's transferred through body fluid. So he highly has to figure out what he's going to do. His daughter saw him. She cleaned the wound. She said, you got to take the medicine. There's medicine you can take to fight that disease. You got to take it. He was allergic and didn't know. Now he's sick, deathly ill in Johannesburg, South Africa. She's got to get him home. There was a flight from Johannesburg to Atlanta, Georgia. They were on the plane. He was in 21A. She was in 21B. As the plane took off, quietly and slowly, she would take his vitals. Everything she learned in school told her that her daddy would never make it over the ocean, that he would die on that Delta flight before he got home. He fell asleep. She slid out of her seat and went to the bathroom and began to beg God to save her daddy. Now, I know some of you are looking at me going, I came on a Wednesday night for this. It's the most depressing sermon I ever heard in my entire life. It's all right. But if you don't understand Tara and you don't understand Heather, maybe you'll understand this little boy. See, this little boy was eight years old. He was in the first grade. His mom and dad came to school for parent-teacher conference. I hate parent-teacher conference. If you hate parent-teacher conference, clap your hands. I hate that day. Now we know all the bad students, right? <laughs> Including me. This little boy, his name was first, first, first one. Both mom and dad showed up, sit down, teacher talked for five minutes. When it was over, they walked outside, and he noticed something. The little boy, all his friends were with their parents. All his friends' parents were young, but his parents were like old. And he's thinking to himself, why are they old? But the boy, cool. He waited till he got in the car. In the back seat, he yelled to the front seat, hey, why y'all old? Hey, can I just stop right here? You should see the look on the young people. What in the world? No, literally not one kid left. Not nobody going to no bathroom. Everybody like. <laughs> Yo, youth pastor told you I was good. Y'all didn't listen to him, did you? He wears Jordans. You should listen to him. And they clean, too. Clap for your youth pastor. Clean. He clean. Is your wife here? Where she at? Oh, she dresses you, don't she? Yeah. <laughs> Some of y'all are glad I'm giving him a hard time. How is it? All right, all right, all right. <laughs> when they got home, 
The little boy's dad said, we got to talk. And they put him at the kitchen table to have a talk. Hey, anybody ever been to the kitchen table to have a talk? If you haven't, don't go. <laughs> Look at me, little boy. If you don't smell food, run, boy, run, okay? <laughs> Thought I'd help him out. <laughs> the dad said, son, there's a plan for your life. The mom said, baby, started crying. The mom cried so hard that the dad moved chairs and held the mom. It took him 10 minutes to calm the mom down. Finally, when she got calm, he said, tell him now. And the mom said, I'm sorry. I'm old because I'm not your mom. The dad whispered, I'm not your father. You're in foster care. The mom said, you have a brother. His name's Keith. You have two sisters, Annette and Jeanette. Your mom kept your brother. Your mom kept both your sisters, but she said you were a mistake. She hated the day that you were born. Are you all right, little boy? Sound fine. See, the problem is, boys, look, let me help you out. Every boy wears a mask. Every boy pretends everything's good when it's bad, happy when it's sad, right when it's wrong. I'm going to look at the young people, but look at me, my brother. Your mask will fall. And I came tonight to tell you what to do when it does. Now, girls, it's real simple. Baby, there's hurt and pain in this world, and Mac and Clinique don't make a makeup to cover that kind of pain. That's as black as it's going to get tonight, all right? So my sisters, when everything starts running, and my brother, when your mask falls, the Bible says in John 14, 1, trust in God. Trust also in me. So touch your neighbor and say, he's there. Touch your other neighbor and say, everything's going to be all right. And listen to me. If you do not understand those three stories, then you're already dead. Your body just hadn't told you yet. But I got to be honest with you. I ain't done yet. I only gave you half of the stories. Are y'all ready for the other half? I don't think y'all ready. I just don't think y'all ready. I ain't got nowhere else to go, though. And I'm already sweating, so I might as well finish it. But I got to give young people, look at me. Let me help the young people out. Listen to me. Let me give you the meaning of life. I can't, you can't bring young people in a room like this without giving them a two. Parents, if I'm right, just let them know. I'm going to give you the meaning of life. There are two things in life you must always remember, kids. Number one, always remember this. Boys and girls are different. I love it. Look, I got one boy like, uh-uh, mama said we all the same. Shut up, boy. Your mama wrong. Okay, I might as well do it. I might as well do it. Look at me, young people. Like, like this. If one girl got to go to the bathroom, two girls get to go with her. You ain't never seen a brother jump up and go, ooh, I got to go. Hey, Steve, let's go pee-pee. You ain't never heard that. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, he telling the truth. <laughs> hey, number two, number two, you ever notice women sneeze pretty? They're like, katoo, all right? And if a sister cried, they cry pretty. Men cry ugly. Brothers be like, Arr. you know I'm right. How about this? Women can drive cars better than men. Women can drive better than men. Get it again. Why you booing? You in the ninth grade. You ride a bicycle. Shut up, all right? Let me explain. Look, a woman got a brand new car. Oh, did y'all hear that? A woman got a brand. No, no, no. Let's wrap this one. A woman got a brand new car. Hey, she really can't drive very far. She forgot to put gas in her car. Now brother going to steal her car. Wait, 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 wait. What's that? A woman will wreck her car to save a cat running across the road. Yes, she will, girl. A man will wreck his car trying to kill that sucker running across the road. Clap your hands. That's number three. I got old people clapping. Come on, dude. Brother in the back clapping like, what up? Yeah, all right. Last one, last one. Anybody ever get up in the morning, get your toothbrush and toothpaste, go to put it in your mouth, and the toothpaste falls off? <laughs> Girls, what do you do? Wash it out of the sink, get more toothpaste, start over. Boys, what do we do? Scoop it up. That's right. <laughs> Who cares if your daddy shaved that morning? Scoop it up anyway. Go to school, got hair on your teeth, you nasty. All right, I'm just saying. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I love it. Some of you are like, it was going so well. <laughs> I said two, meaning life, two. That's number one, boys and girls different. Number two is just a phrase. Everybody repeat after me. Life is a roller coaster. I love roller coasters. They go so fast, makes my fat go backwards. I'm skinny again. All right. 
No, y'all don't understand. I rode the fastest roller coaster in the world. It was a long time ago. It went 120 miles an hour, bro. It went so fast. I went blind. My cheeks flew over my head. I couldn't see none. The whole ride, I kept hearing this noise. It was like, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, what is that? Then I realized we were going so fast, my fat was suffocating the girl sitting behind me, all right? In reality, the girl was yelling, help! <laughs> but with my fat hitting her in the face, it was like, blah, 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 not good. When I was in the ninth grade, everybody say, ninth grade? My friends talked me into getting on a roller coaster, went upside down. Reggie don't belong upside down. All my friends are like, Reggie, Reggie. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Anybody ever do something because you were with your friends? You know what I'm saying? I like, one kid raised his hand, mom put his hand down. No, let the boy raise his hand. All right. You know, I did, I did. It wasn't good. I should have never gotten on that thing. We went down the hill, around the curve, halfway through the loop, upside down. The ride broke. No, 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 no. The brakes grabbed. We stopped upside down. I'm hanging upside down. <laughs> Do y'all see the words coming out of my mouth? All my fat is rolling toward my head now. I'm trying to push it down. I can hear it on the news. Fat man died on a roller coaster. <laughs> then it got worse. The girl in front of me, she threw up and the wind was blowing in my direction. I can't duck and if I could duck, my belly button would give me a hickey on my forehead. There you go. Some of you are going, what does that have to do with life? Everything. You know why? Some days you're on top of the hill and everything's great. Some days you're going downhill so fast you want to quit. But listen to me, my brother. Never give up on the ride of life because they will fix the ride. The only question is, my sister, is will you be on the ride when they fix it? Oh, by the way, for those of you who are super spiritual and you're like, oh, this isn't Jesus. The Bible says a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. I just thought I'd give a little medicine out. Hey, everything's going to be all right. Hey, let's do this. Hey, this better with music. Where's the band? <laughs> They're like, when do you want us to come back? I said, oh, you'll know. <laughs> I'm really subtle. <laughs> hey, guitar boy, don't go that way. Come up here. Come right over here. Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> I'm just making myself at home. <laughs> I like Indiana. I knew I loved Hoosiers for some reason. I'm just saying. <laughs> hey, look, look, look. We got to go back. We got to go. Hey, hurry up. All right. <laughs> I'm hungry. I got free pizza. <laughs> I'm pretending I'm a junior in high school tonight. <laughs> Old oh, lady, she's coming too. <laughs> Never give up. All right. <laughs> oh, look at it. Go ahead, man. Ooh. You really black, aren't you? Nah, nah. Every now and then, somebody gets caught in the wrong skin. During the first song, I looked up and went, he got caught in the wrong skin. Y'all clap for Mr. White Chocolate right there. All right, let's do this. Let's do this. Everybody say, Tay Ra. Hey, y'all remember where she is, right? In one hour, they're going to pull the plug. Oh, I love this. I love this. Hey, somebody say, everything's going to be all right. <laughs> all right, to the lady translating in Spanish, hold on to your breath, girl. Here we go. All right. <laughs> There's a lady translating in Spanish, by the way. Y'all know that. <laughs> She's going, he's talking to me. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. The doctor did not wait an hour. 20 minutes into the one hour, he came to the room that they had her in. When he got to the door, the mom walked out and said, no, you said one hour. He said, ma'am, listen to me. I have to do this by law. Every time something like this happens, I check the national database to see if there's any good that can come. And there is. There's a girl in Phoenix, Arizona. She'll die in five days if she doesn't get a new heart. And everything points that your daughter's a perfect match. So I have to ask you the most difficult question of your life. Can I have your baby's heart so another girl can live? She, she said, I can give you 15 minutes but no more 
He walked away. When he came back, she was in the hall. She said, promise me, one year from today, I can meet the girl with the heart. Promise me. I don't care what it takes. There might be rules that we're breaking. We're going to break those rules. He said, I promise. I promise. I promise. So she said, okay. She said, okay. And they did what they had to do. Fast forward one year. On December 26, a mom and a dad without their little girl get on a plane. They're not going snow skiing. They're going to Phoenix, Arizona. When they get to Phoenix, they're going to baggage claim. When they get to the bottom of the escalator, guess who's there? The doctor from Denver's there. And he's like, hey, I figured you guys wanted to go now. Let's get your luggage. I got a rental car. We're going to take you to their house. When they pulled up in front of the house, they knew which one it was because there was a couple outside waiting for him. Listen, when you save someone's life, you don't let them knock on your door. When someone's life is saved, you don't wait for them to ring your doorbell. You meet them in the front yard. Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock. If any man opens the door, I will come in. It is time for somebody in this room to let him in. Let him in. Somebody touch your neighbor and say, everything's going to be all right. Oh, this work is good. The mom and dad in the front yard, they crying, they crying. The mom and dad getting out of the rental car, they crying, they crying. But the doctor had already been there. He said, let's go inside. I got a surprise. They had hooked that girl up to a monitor, to speakers. So when they opened the front door of the house, all you could hear was, and Tara's mom's like, that's our baby's heart. That's our baby's heart. That's our baby's heart. That's our baby's heart. Now, some of you are going, why is everybody like starting to cry? Because they already know this has happened over and over and over again. Because the Bible says that when we let Jesus into our, our life, when we accept Jesus as our Savior, he takes our worldly, messed up, corrupt heart. And he is the great physician. And he doesn't just give us a new heart. He gives us Jesus' heart gives us Jesus' heart. Somebody touch your neighbor and say, all right, all right, all right. Touch your other neighbor and say, it's about to get good up in here. Oh, y'all don't understand. That's just one. That's just Tara. Do y'all remember Heather? Do you remember where she is? She's in the bathroom on an airplane begging God to save her daddy. And then it happened. She heard a knock on the bathroom door. When she opened the door, she knew it was somebody saying something's wrong with your dad. There were three men standing there. One man said, ma'am, you've been in here an hour and a half. We just want to make sure you're okay. If you need help, we can help you because we all three doctors. She told him the whole story about her dad and the medicine and the reaction. She says, I was praying that God would save my dad. All three men started laughing. That is not a good time to laugh, especially to a girl from Atlanta, Georgia. Because she reached up and started taking her earrings off. I don't know if y'all know what that means, all right? Something about to go down when a sister take her earrings off, all right? Somebody look at your neighbor and say, you from Indiana, you won't understand. It's okay, though, all right? If you see a girl with Vaseline, run, all right? They laugh. She said, why y'all laughing? Dude, this is about to get good. You got to shake your neighbor. You got to get this. this. Are y'all ready? You ready? You ready? She's ready. All right. They said, ma'am, we're not just doctors. And there's not just three of us. There are 99 doctors on this plane from the continent of Africa. Wait, wait for it. We're going to Atlanta for the World AIDS Conference. The medicine your dad needs, it's in my bag in 22A. Okay, wait, wait. Okay, everybody freeze. You notice the adults are standing, so I gotta break it down for the little children up in here. Okay, let me put this on your level. Look at me. They could have been on any plane at any time, at any moment. But no, no, no. They were on the right plane at the right time, at the right moment. Let me help you out. They could have been on a plane with a bunch of clowns going to Atlanta for a clown convention, but they were not. They could have been on a plane with a bunch of plumbers going to Atlanta for a plumber convention who need to pull up their pants and say no to crack, but they were not. They were on the right plane at the right time. You're in the right place at the right time with the right God, with the right answer for you. Somebody say everything's gonna be all right. Oh, y'all ain't got it. 
Y'all ain't got, okay, thank you. Thank you, young people. Thank you. One girl stood up, looked down at her friend and said, I'm sorry, but that was good. Good job, girl, good job. But if you don't understand those two, you remember a little boy? First grade. There's something I need to tell you about that boy. He told his mom he was okay, but he was lying. Because from eight years old to 21 years old, that boy was highly suicidal. When he was 12 years old, at three in the morning, he decided to take his life. But his foster care dad heard him crying and walked in the room. When his foster care dad walked in, he said, I heard you crying. Little boy said, how could you hear me crying? Your room's on the other end of the house. And the foster care dad said, son, every day you talk to me, but you haven't talked to me for three days. Every day you hug your mom when she comes home from work, but you haven't hugged your mom in three days. So we knew something was wrong. So for the past three nights, I've been sleeping at your door. And this morning I heard you cry. What's wrong? And the boy said, I don't know what to do. And the dad said, listen to me. I will never call you Reggie. Do I need to do that one more time? I will never call you Reggie. My name's Reggie. Uh, oh, by the way, the third boy, that's why I didn't tell you his name. I'm the third boy. You see, my mom slept with a man for $20 to get food for my brother and my sisters because her husband left her when they got evicted from their home. She gave birth to me, but then she said I was a mistake and she hated the day I was born. So I grew up thinking I was a mistake and I should have never been born. But one day, I found Jesus. Or maybe he found me. On, I don't know. But either way, I opened the door and I let him in my life. And you know what? It ain't never been the same again never been the same again somebody look at your neighbor and say everything's gonna be all right come on look at your other neighbor and say everything's gonna be all right somebody look at somebody and give them a hug and say it's gonna be all right it's gonna be all right it's gonna be all right all right y'all sit down I gotta go good good hey thanks for letting me hang out with you oh okay I want to come do schools. Oh, by the way, I'm not able to say Jesus in schools, but when I tell that story and they find out it's me, good Lord. Kid, yesterday I was in Alabama, and there was, uh, there was like 2,900 kids, both sides of the gym. And I tell the story about how my dad slept by my door. And then I look at kids and I say, in every high school, I say, y'all don't get it. I'm just sitting by your door. They only gave me 40 minutes to sit by your door. And I just came to say to every kid, I love you. Do you know I never get laughed at? And y'all don't understand. I don't think Indiana has the nasty schools they make me go to. I'm in the hood. I mean, I was just not good at all. And kids come up and hug me during the program before it even ends. Because everybody needs love. You see, in a public school, I'm not able to share who Jesus is. But I get to be Jesus. Kids go home, then they Google me online. They find out where all my stuff. They get videos, YouTube videos. Then I get emails. Get emails from students who said, I said that prayer online last night. So I was in study hall after you left, and I said that prayer that you said on TV on my phone. You see, I don't need to see what's happening. I'm not the end result to a kid's life. I might be the introduction to Jesus. That's all I want to be. I don't need no glory. I'm good. I'm good. I'm just $20 anyway. But you know what? I've decided to be second. I want these young people to win. I want them to come in first place. I want them to lift a trophy. I want them to hear the cheers. I want them to write the songs. I want them to preach the sermons. I want them to win. Do you want your kids to win? Then just get on your feet, turn to them, and clap to them. Tell them you want them to win. We want them to win. We want you to win. We want you to win. So here we go. Here we go. You can sit down. I got two altar calls. Can I do two? Well, I'm starting early, so I can do two. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong. Hey, you go to a buffet, you go back twice. You might as well go to Jesus double dipping. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Hey, uh. 
I would be remiss to think that I preached that whole sermon and it was my idea. Ain't nothing my idea. At home with my wife, ain't nothing my idea. I'm glad y'all got that. So I decided wherever I go, it ain't my idea. It's Jesus. Hey, somebody in this room, you're hurting. Let me tell you why I do the way I do things. Whenever and however you got in this room, wherever you're sitting now, you carry something from outside to that seat where you're at. My whole night, the way I write sermons is to convince you to move. You gotta move. You can't stay there anymore. It's killing you where you're at. The hurt, the pain, the memories. Hey, anybody here ever have something happen in your past you wish you could forget, but you know you can't? Anybody ever wake up like 3, 4 in the morning and you close your eyes and go back to sleep and it's like a movie in your head from something in your past you wish you can, you gotta move. You wasn't born to carry that. So if I'm going to preach this sermon and read that scripture, then I need to give you a chance to give Jesus that hurt, to give Jesus that sorrow. Don't y'all know what I am? I'm the biggest, blackest greeting card from heaven you'll ever see in your entire life. And Jesus is saying, come unto me, all ye who are weary, and I'll give you rest. So here's the deal. My first altar call, I'm only giving two. If you're going through something, if you're going through something and you're ready to give it to Jesus, I'm going to count from 15 to 0. And whenever I get to 0, whoever's standing up here, I'm going to pray for you. And God's going to touch you. Don't be leaving because i got two altar calls. It's like the buffet with Jesus tonight, all right? So you're going through something difficult. You're going through something hard. You're going through something. You just can't handle it no more. Dude, even Christians hurt. Y'all do know that, right? But God is wanting to do it. You just got to decide. The Bible says in Matthew, if you declare me before men, I'll declare you before my Father in heaven. You're deciding tonight, I am not going back to my car the way I got in this building. I'm going to give it to Jesus. I'm going to let him handle it. So whoever you are, 15. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, Awesome. Keep coming. Keep coming. There's always time. There's always time. If you're in your seat and you know what it's like for God to come through for you, then I just need you to stand to your feet and stretch both hands toward these people. And we're going to believe God for miracles. We're going to hear about miracles. Hey, listen to me. Even in death, God wins. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but even in death, God wins. Hey, God don't ever want you to forget. He didn't want you to forget him dying for you, so you don't have to forget people who died for you. My foster care parents, I buried both of them, preached both their funerals. They, every time I preach, I think of them because I know they can hear every word I'm saying. So here it is. Don't grieve. Let them push you. And live for Jesus until you see him on the other side. Take somebody with you. Take somebody with you. Take somebody with you. Are y'all ready? It's heavy what some of you are carrying. Jesus, I pray that you would answer the cry of their heart. Jesus, I pray. Hey, do me a favor. Bring that down. Everybody look at me. Look, I got to be honest, okay? I almost made it out of here because this is a good altar call. (laughs) But see, I have this thing with Jesus. If I don't do what he lays on my heart, I don't get to sleep. He'll keep me up all night long. I don't like that. So I got to do what he's asking. And maybe you're already here. But maybe you're in your seat. Earlier in my sermon, when I was talking about my story, I said from 8 to 21, that boy wanted to die. He was highly suicidal. There are people in this room. It's you. It's you. 
Number one, you need to understand there's a difference between an action and a thought. Because when Jesus was in the desert, the devil tempted him to take his life. He said, jump off the temple. Jump off the peak. If you're God's son, he'll save you. But there's a difference. I cannot do this because God won't let me sleep. And not only that, you need to be set free tonight. Yeah, I know what it's like. I know what it's like to wake up in the morning and wish you hadn't woke up. My foster care mom used to make us play that same prayer. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And if I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. When she would leave the room, you know what I would say? Please, Jesus, don't let me wake up. I can't imagine that now. But it changed because of an altar and of Jesus. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, I'm going to count from 15 to 0. This ain't going to be easy. It's like the woman with the issue of blood. She had to push through the crowd. Pastor, can you help me for a second? No, you're, you're with him. Stay right there with them. Stay with them. Come here. Help me. Come right up front in the, on the floor, right in the middle. Hey, 15 seconds. Every head bowed, every eye closed. No one looking around. If someone goes by you, just let them by you. I'm going to give you 20 seconds to get from your seat here. You say, Reggie, I don't want to... I don't want to die. Not like that. And I'm giving it to Jesus. I'm giving my thoughts to Jesus before they become an action. So every person, you contemplate suicide. Maybe you've even tried suicide. But tonight is the night that you lay it at the altar and give it to Jesus. I need you to push through this crowd and come as close to pastor as you can. you got 20 seconds to do it. Every suicidal kid in this room, 19, 18, 17, 16. Yeah, come on. 15. 14, 13, 12, 11. Hey, somebody, you know your friend's struggling? Put your arm around them and say, I'll go with you. I'll go with you. I'll walk with you. Come on, do it right now. All they can do is say no. And if they say no, at least they know there's somebody who loves them. There's somebody who's with them. Say, hey, 10, 9, my, 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 8. Come on, church, pray right now. Pray. This is life and death. This is life and death. I didn't ask for this. This is life and death. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Jesus, I pray right now. We speak life in Jesus' name. I'll say it again. We speak life in Jesus' name. Life in Jesus. Devil, get your hands off your children. Get them off of them. They belong to Jesus now. We speak hope in Jesus' name. We speak kind. We speak life. We speak future. We speak destiny in Jesus' name. Your past is your history. Your future is your destiny. I'll say it again. Your past is your history, but your future is your destiny. Your future is your destiny. Your future is your destiny. Come on, cry out to God right now. Sing. It's not over. It's not finished. It's not ending. It's only the beginning. It's not over. It's not finished. It's not ending. I pray for every person that's standing down the front. God, you knew and you saw every step that they took. And with every step, victory. With every step, triumph. With every step, winning. With every step, we're in you, Jesus. We will trust in you. We won't lean on our own understanding. We will lean on you. We will keep our focus on you. You are the author and finisher of our faith. No matter what we remember, we know who we are with now. And it's Jesus. Somebody say his name. Say his name. Say his name. Now lift both hands to heaven no matter where you are, whether you feel it or not, and thank him for what he's doing. It's done. When God is in it, there is no limits. When God is in it, it's not over. It's not over. When God is in it, there is down front say this prayer with me say Jesus I give you everything 
I give you this situation. I give you this need. I give you my past. And I lean not on my own understanding, but I will trust in you. Come on, say, I will trust in you. Come on, say, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. In Jesus' name I pray. And can I ask you something? Do you know him? Do you know my Jesus? Are you saved tonight? Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says, If you declare with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Did you walk in this room with sin? If that's you, don't, don't be ashamed. But you don't have to leave the way you came in Jesus' name. So my last thing is to ask you to give your life to Jesus, no matter who you are, where you're sitting. Hey, this is like the coolest little Indiana family I've seen in a long time. So we all in this together. So from the front to the back, left to the right, all the saints help the sinner. All the sinners help yourself. We're going to say a prayer asking Jesus to be Lord of our life. Say it with me. Say it loud and strong. This is your moment. I don't care what you've done. Your past is your history after this prayer. But your destiny is your future. Y'all ready? Everybody say Jesus. With my mouth, I declare you, Jesus, are the Son of God. In my heart, I believe that you raised Jesus from the dead. So on this first Wednesday, I can simply say I'm saved because the words I'm speaking. I'm saved because of Jesus' actions for me on the cross. I'm saved. I'm saved in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen, 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 amen. Amen, amen. Amen. One more thing. Now wait. We're going to sing. Keep praying. We're going to sing. But we got to have a reason to sing and shout. I like this. It's not over. That's a good song. Ricardo Sanchez. Go ahead, man. That's good. Are y'all ready? Are y'all ready? Are y'all ready? Before we sing, here's the deal. You got to go public for Jesus. Matthew, declare him before man. He'll declare you before his Father in heaven. So I'm going to count to the number three. When I get to three, if you in this room and you came into this church tonight with sin in your life, but you said that prayer and you asked Jesus to forgive you, I don't care how you feel. It ain't about feelings. It's about actions. Feelings will come and feelings will go. But who you are will never. So I'm going to count to three. If you came in here with sin, but you asked Jesus to forgive you, you need to take a step of faith. Take both hands when I get to three. If you got saved tonight, you rededicated your life tonight, both hands and just start waving like this. Now here's what's going to happen. When you start waving, there's going to be a Christian near you that's just going to hug you and say, welcome home. Because that's what we do. So ready? On three. If you got saved, got right with God tonight, take both hands, put them up and wave. Some of you, your brain's going, okay, you did it, but don't, don't wave, don't wave, don't wave. No, the devil's a liar. You need to go ahead and wave. Go public for Jesus, all right? One, you did it tonight. Two, do it right now. Three, wave, you did it tonight, you did it. Hug him, hug him, go hug him.